is this living, uh, breathing character, and we have to figure out how he reacts in every environment. Yeah. Just like Simon and Nick act differently in, in every environment, and he has to behave the same way, or he just doesn't come across as believable. And uh, we very quickly kind of identified a few key areas that presented challenges for improving the animators in delivering a believable, engaging, and appealing performance. We rigged up a, an RV. Simon and Nick were there in character, in costume, seeing how, how they came across and how they worked. We used that as a springboard to really push the film, get people interested in making the film, to help establish what kind of voice, what kind of actor people would need to play Paul. I think initially he was a little more uh, cantankerous and grumpy. Yeah. And uh, once they cast Seth, he got that charm that Seth comes across with anything he says. And so the, the character transformed a little bit from what how he was right on the script to what he became with Seth's voice. And then when we got into animating, he changed again. You know, we've had a team of 200 to 250 people working here probably for a year now. Again, so we look into the camera. I mean, just the animation would be like, what? 50 people? Am I speaking to you, the camera? I Do I look at the camera? 40 people? No, no, well, we only had a crew of 26. Oh, really? Look at the camera or just above the camera? Well, I would say we've probably turned over about 300 stuff. Uh, do you want to look in the camera or you? Uh, not all of them at the same time. But I will. Well, not 120 at one is the highest peak of the one moment. But don't spoil it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, quite an international crew as well, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm from Greece. I'm Polish. I'm from Italy. I'm from Sweden. Lithuania. I'm originally from Mexico. So there's lots of different ideas coming in here and there. Yeah. It's quite interesting some of the actors. Sometimes our supervisor was saying to a guy that looks so too Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was Italian. He's a very so Italian guy. Yeah. Yeah. Always. 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 <laughs> Always. <laughs> we try to keep down the hands, you know, because we speak too much with the hands in Italian. <laughs> I'm Will Fosa. I was a match mover on Paul and I was also used as muscle reference on Paul. As well. Can we see your muscles? <laughs> just, <laughs> just a little, uh, little flex of the guns. Yeah. No, I think it was actually I was chosen because of the opposite. Because Paul's a little bit scrawny, so uh, I was great reference for that. Well, I think initially what Nick and Simon wanted was the classic grey alien that you see in all the tabloid newspapers. Um, but once we started designing the character it was apparent that he needed to be appealing because he was going to be on screen for two hours. He needed to be something you could actually look at. And a classic alien is a little generic and doesn't have a whole lot of personality. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just don't make me look fat, okay? Earth's gravity adds 10 pounds. And when your eyes are that big and you're trying to make it look real or believable, um, even tiny little girls can read way bigger. Like, blinks became yeah. a big deal. Yeah. It wasn't just about creating a realistic piece of animation. It was interpreting it through this this design and still making it feel like he was an appealing, interesting, likeable kind of character. Um, senior animator, character animator. Um, one of the animators. I'm an animator. 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 I'm an animator. I think you need a pretty tough skin to be an animator. Uh, every day you're showing your work to your colleagues, to the director, to your supervisor, and you're taking notes, criticisms of, of what you're doing. And almost every day we'd see great work, see fantastic versions of, of or interpretations of shots. Mm -hmm. But if they're not right for the cut, if they're not right for the scene, you've got to go back and do it again. Um, the sort of insane level of detail that double negative the uh, CGI animators get into, that kind of blows my mind because they do this on their own initiative, a lot of it. I mean, we talk about it and talk about it, talk about it. There's stuff that you would just never think to do. We finished the film, we went to the editing room, we literally started taking uh, set, videotape of Seth's head from the stuff we've done in pre-production and cutting it into the movie, just like, you know, the floating genie from TV's Playhouse. And, you know, it was strange because nothing, not only was he not there, and not only was Seth Rogen dressed like, a, you know, in a motion capture suit, which was sort of like a bike messenger, it didn't really match. I mean, the performance, he was acting to slightly, uh, to a different energy in those scenes. Well, I think as Greg and Chris yeah. come from a traditional live-action background and they craft these movies down to the last second. Um, they hone it for the performance, and when they get Paul in there, they have to edit it differently in order to make his performance work, or they have to go get Seth to ADR a new piece of dialogue to make it funnier. We went back to Seth, and we started ADR with him again. Now he could act versus what we had cut, 
And it was sort of a back and forth. We'd take some of what he he had done and we'd recut the scene and we'd go back and recut the scene. And meanwhile, the animators would use that as reference for animation. Oh, fuck. <gasps> At the time, we're like, ah, oh, another sequence to go back to. But it was actually really good because the first version we had, he was a lot softer, a lot more subtle and didn't have as much impact. While second time around, we had his personality, we knew what he should be like. When he was energized, he, he acted a certain way. And straight from the get-go, was so much stronger the second time around. Things that I've consistently heard from other filmmakers now that I've talked to who've done stuff like this before is they'll build an animatronic puppet and shoot it and then replace it with CG later, which, is, which we ended up doing a certain amount of. The challenging part of this is Nick actually strangling Paul. And that was quite difficult. Um, he strangled a puppet thing, right? Yeah, green puppet. yeah. And then we had to replace that with Paul and a lot of paintwork, I'm sure, which is not our remit, but... Um, turned but out great, though. It's really It funny. looks... Uh, yeah, I saw it the yeah. other day again, and it looks really, really strong, actually. And it's really, really funny. Drop of the galaxy. Thank you. He looks too obvious. There's a reason for that, Clyde. We had a great moment on set where we were expecting to just strangle him and... Uh, Clearly, Nick just got inspired and came in on sort of a karate kick to Paul's head. We all.